Hello. Martin, hello. Come and meet Percy. Where is Percy? There, there he is. In this week's episode, Martin shows his affection for Percy the tortoise. Talking to him and doing his hair, I love doing. <laughs> Percy and me are old friends now. Yeah. While Julie does her best to set the table. But first, civil war erupts at Mapperton. Welcome to Mapperton, our family home and estate in Dorset in the southwest of England. Julie and I took over running Mapperton a few years ago from my parents, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich. It's a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. This place is full of fascinating stories, extraordinary people, and endless repairs. So please join our family on this journey of a lifetime as we put all our efforts into preserving this magnificent part of England's heritage. I am Oliver Cromwell, the Lieutenant General of Horse in the recently new modelled Army of Parliament. For our school's project, we're rehearsing a live tour from Mapperton, combined with specially filmed battle reenactment sequences from the Civil War. Stephen, of course, is managing the technology. Prepare to advance! Time that we remove the King's evil counsellors from his inner circle. Time to bring back the King, Lords and Commons in Parliament assembled to govern this country in the natural and orderly fashion. I'm standing here today in the hall at Mapperton uh, in front of a portrait of Edward, first Earl of Sandwich. And the reason I'm here is because we have just started or are about to film a really exciting new project for schools. And one of the challenges at Mapperton has been trying to get more younger people to come and engage with heritage. I mean, I think it's a, it's a problem everywhere. Um, but we came up with a rather cunning way to do it. And I'm here with Anne-Marie and Karen, who've been um, helping us with this project. Anne-Marie, in particular, has been developing this program for schools. Anne-Marie, do you want to just describe briefly what it is we're trying to do? Because <laughs> it's quite yeah. revolutionary, and we don't think that any other historic houses are doing this quite yet. Well, I hope they're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, briefly, what we're trying to do is connect schools to history, and particularly the history at Mapperton and really bring it alive, and so history away from history books, by bringing them to homes, showing them artefacts, and telling them stories that support and embellish what they're learning in schools. I think that really is the aim. So they learn beyond the classroom walls, but they still stick with the curriculum. And, and that's been the rub, really, trying the, to get the, those the, two things. One of the challenges that we've had here at Mapperton has actually been bringing children here physically. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been difficult because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. but it's difficult generally because of transport, bringing whole groups of kids together. So the exciting thing here is that we are beaming the content from Mapperton into the classrooms, because mm -hmm. all classrooms these days have projectors on the walls, and we can take advantage of that to actually bring live courses, live streaming from Mapperton. Mm -hmm. Karen, you've been working in education for schools and children relating to historic houses for a very long time. You have got involved in this project as well. Do you know of anything else that is like this? No, there is nothing like this. And I think the beauty of this is that when the schools have their textbooks and they have the overarching view of history, with this you can actually get into a family and what they actually did to show them the nitty gritty of history and they love the blood and the guts and the gore and they love the human stories. So this is perfect. <laughs> Are we, is there going to be some blood and guts today? Oh, there's going to be blood and guts today. Yeah, not our own, I hope. No, yeah. no. Or Und I undercover to blood and guts. Undercover. Yeah. But we don't really know if this is all going to work because we're here today to do, a, to do a full dress rehearsal. We don't know if the technology is going to work. We don't know if the timings are going to work. We don't know if Stephen's going to press the right button at the right moment. We don't know if we're going to work. <laughs> <I don't know laughs> if it work. So 
We're going to give it all a run through and see on what happens. On a wish happens. and a prayer, I think. On a wish and a prayer. Say, yeah. And then um, in a week's time, we go live after the rehearsal. So good luck, everybody. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Let's get to it. Welcome to Mapperton. Um, I hope you can all hear. I hope you can all see. Yeah, OK. Um, here I am standing in the Great Hall at Mapperton. And we're going to start really by looking at looking at Edward. And what can you tell us? We've got a portrait of Edward Montague. And what does the portrait tell us, Karen, about Edward? In actual fact, we're standing, he's behind us here in this particular portrait. But what can you tell us about the portraits and what it tells us about the times that he lived in? The interesting thing about this portrait is that here we have a young man very plainly dressed and it gives no hint of the greatness to come. Greatness in terms of uh, our, his fighting on the battlefield and greatness in terms of his service to both Cromwell and to the crown. Interesting in a time of civil war to be able to serve both opposing parts. And we're going to look at four characters and each of them are talking after the battle about how it affected them. So watch carefully. And it'd be a really good idea if you take a few notes so you can ask us questions or tell us what you think at a later point. My name is Thomas Kelsey. I am the Major of Colonel Edward Montague's regiment, serving at the Battle of Naseby here in this day in June 1645. Front rank, musketeers, prepare to fire. Give fire! Year eight, it's over to you now. Right at the very beginning, we asked you to join in. So we've just finished filming the rehearsal for the school's programme. And I think it went absolutely magnificently. Thanks to both of you. But how did you feel? Honest opinion. Honest opinion. <laughs> well, I can't believe how, um, having lived with this script for too long, how nervous I was actually at seeing it all come together. But I, I really do think it's a valuable experience, not only for us, but particularly for the students watching, to be in an historic home and actually to have an expert explain things so clearly. I mean, I was captivated and it's quite hard to actually keep to the script because you were engaged in listening to the answers. Obviously, it was too long. We found out we're going to have to cut it. <laughs> we are going to have to cut it, but, we, enough, know, but we know where to cut it, don't well, we? Well, yeah. So yeah. there's enough material, which was one of the original suspicions that there was going to be too much. But that's the difference between seeing something on paper and actually seeing it in the flesh, I think. Probably. But I think any kind of live performance, which is what this was, after all, you know, mm. we're going to be beaming this live into classrooms. It's mm. not something that's pre-recorded. It's nerve-wracking. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, how did, how, you did it absolutely brilliantly. Well, you're, you're very she kind. did, she I, did. I think because I, I absolutely adore this subject and I adore Mapperton, that, and, and I talk too much anyway. So <laughs> Nonsense. I, 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 could, I could go on and on and on, so I, I really need you to shut me up. But I, it's, it's fascinating, I think, for schools because they see the broad sweep of history to actually nail that history with one family mm. and their experience mm. and I for agree. them to understand that this was real people um, they were really fighting for their lives on the battlefield and they had a massive impact locally and nationally it's great for schools to mm. see that i mean the idea behind what we're doing here is bringing history to life living history and it's also live history in a way because mm. we're here live with the schools mm. and all of the detail of those battles mm. um, was really brought home by these short films that we had made with battle reenactors from that period bringing to life exactly what it was like the smoke the blood mm. the terror mm. the motivations the mm. and um mm. And I think that's what's going to be so successful. We brought something to life here in a mm, way that is quite novel and exciting mm. and different. And we really hope the schools, and particularly, obviously, the children, uh, enjoy this. I don't think any other historic house has done this, so please don't copy us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or yet. Um, but we're going live next week. What time is it? Wednesday? Uh, it, Wednesday, 9.10. 9.10. Etched on my soul. Etched on is our it? soul, <laughs> isn't it really? 9.10, <laughs> no, no. nice so early start. You'll be back here. We'll mm. be setting the camera up. Mm. And off we go. Mm.
I'm setting the table for my husband and I. Now, he is a real stickler on things in a kind, nice way. It's okay, I'm, I'm happy with constructive criticism. I still need to get this right. Oh, and there goes the clock. There we go, three, five. So plenty of time to get this ready. Pretty sure these are salad plates. So I think they go there, oh dear. Or maybe they're, um, are they salad plates? Are they cheese plates? Red, white. Now, that actually looks really good to me. I mean, I would be super happy if somebody said that. I can see that is, that is, that looks like a perfect line to me. See, I'm exhausted already. Like, now I gotta go cook the whole thing. That set the table. Right, so now I'm gonna go get my husband and see what he thinks. I think Julie's been on Google and she's looked up how to set a table. No, no. Because this is what it comes out with. <laughs> That's not true. It's true. No. It's absolutely true. No, I knew how to so do this. So this. Is, this, is, this, is, this is... Perfect. We would never set our table like this, ever. I mean, it's, what? There, there are some things that are okay. I did not. There are some things that are okay, but... but I knew how to do... What did I Google? What but, would I um, Google? Well, first of all... I got okay. very confused with things, like where to put this. I put yeah. it to the side. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. so, Wait, the, first, so the first thing is that the distance is, is about did. right. So that's okay. So it's, a, it's, about, an, it's, about, it's about an inch from the table. Um, these, these are really horrible glasses, by the way, from the cafe, so she hasn't even brought out the nice glasses, but, they, that, but that doesn't they, matter. They were in the kitchen. Um, well, They're... I know, I know, but they... <laughs> it's all right. Um, okay. We're getting there. Okay. Um, the, it... the napkin... But would, did I do would, the glasses would a, right? Would have, a, ..would have a fold. So, um, let's just start this again. Sorry, we're just going to dismantle pretty much everything here. Personally, I think that a lot of fuss is made about, um, table laying and I think yes there is a right way okay. to do it for some people but I think the right way is also the way that kind of feels right to you which is a mix of tradition so different families have laid it in different ways mm. um, and the sort of rules that people apply so yes you start eating from the outside so whichever your first course is would be from the <gasps> outside oh so I've messed that up that knife so so assuming okay. that we're having we're having a main no. course no no, no. First, I was having a starter so I did starter, but oh, I've I messed see. this up. I have messed that up. Right. So I have. That is a mess up. The knives. Okay. Okay, but but what what is the starter? Because again, it depends what what we're eating. I don't know. I you I, don't know. I was going to surprise you. Okay. Well, let's starter, say it was but... soup. No, then... I have a soup as well. I was going to do soup. Okay. okay. Starter main. Okay. Well. Um, so so. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I, I... So anyway, you've got your your pudding spoons at the top. Is that right? Yeah. See? And those, those would be. So I've twisted around, so that, that wouldn't around. be right. Okay. And and I think you'd normally start with soup, so you'd have soup, a soup spoon on the outside. We we would normally lay this. I mean, forget the kind of etiquette nonsense. The way we would normally <laughs> lay a table in our house would be to have the because we normally have a first course that might be soup, in which case there'd be a soup spoon there. Okay. Otherwise, you'd have your main course, which is this one here. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then usually we would actually have the pudding spoon there which would go with the pudding fork on that side where's the pudding and fork? then and then over here on the left hand side we would have the side plate except that's not quite the side plate because you haven't brought the right one out and we might have and we and we might have the side plate with the knife sitting there alternatively which is what I think you were doing here by the way this is a really ugly knife and where you got that one <laughs> but, but we might put the salad plate at the front there. It was a salad plate, okay. Yeah. So, so that could be there. Uh -huh. And then, and then critically, um, the thing you really got wrong was the, the napkin <laughs> sitting on top of the bowl. I mean, <laughs> that, you know, what is that? That's the soup bowl. No, no, this is you sort of building a house, you know, <laughs> with a sort of roof no. on the top. Okay, okay. Um, that, that was just, I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> Google, I suspect. Uh, so, so we're back. I, I, we're back I saw to, it somewhere. And, and okay, we probably we wouldn't use that. As a, we wouldn't use that. As, that might be a consomme bowl or something, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be a soup bowl. So we'll get rid of that one as well. But I'm serving soup tonight. Well, I know we do that in a bigger soup bowl. Okay. Yeah, not not that. And then the critical thing though is the napkin. Now, okay. either you would make your napkin into a particular napkin shape, and there are various different types. Do you know how to do that? I used to but I haven't done it for a while. Okay, have a um, go while I go get But it is true, when I, when I grew up here, we, my grandfather had a butler who would, who would make nice shapes. 
and the, mm -hmm. the typical one was something like that, and it would sort of sit there at the front. Yeah, can Look, you looks not a do little that? bit like the sort of a bishop's hat. Can you not do that? Um, and I, I can't remember to do that. But anyway, otherwise, what we normally do now in these more relaxed times is we would put the napkin on the on the side plate, and we might have the knife on the oh. top like that. Right. Glasses. Yeah. So you'd have the water glass up the front. Normally you're red there, I think, and you're yeah, I did. white there, but... Um, I thought that was red. That's probably what Google told you. No, he's, stop <laughs> so, it. He's anyway, it's, it's something like this, but, okay. we, but we don't get too fussed about it because at the end of the day, you, okay. it doesn't really matter okay. very much. But wait, it's can, just, I know, but I want to... You want to I get, know, you want to get it right. Because you know, you know this I know, stuff. But, so but, but I, you said that there's something goes here. No, so you've got... No, you, no, if no, we're I'm, just going to have a main course... By the way, I don't, I don't particularly like these mats. We've got nicer mats here. Um, uh, no, unless I, they've been taken, they've been taken by my the, parents. Yeah, oh, they're, they're, they're gone. They're gone, are they? Right, okay. So I'm, I'm going to have my main course here. This is pudding. Yeah, that, that would be pudding because you've, you've then eaten these. Then what am I going to eat with my salad? Well, well, you just, you know, you're eating here and you've got your knife and fork and you're delving a bit in there and a bit in there and... You know, and this, this is my butter knife. working fine. So I don't need another knife? But you've left out. What, where, where's salt and pepper? And, no, I um, haven't done... And no. wine, wine coasters and um, and all sorts of other things we might have on the table, candlesticks and anyway. Okay. Well, uh, okay. It's going to be I... a great dinner. What are we eating, by the way? <laughs> Soup. That's You're right. not invited. I'm not invited. Who's not invited I think I'm going to exit at this point. It's terrible. I, cause, and I'll, le I'll not... leave you to think about all the things I've said and reflect on whether <laughs> I've helped or hindered. He's Bye. Out. He's out. He's out. Anyway. I liked what I did. <laughs> actually, you know what? Forget it. I'm actually gonna go get a takeaway. And for those of you in America, that's a to-go. Today, I'm going to visit somebody doing an incredibly important job at Mapperton. A job that, if it wasn't done, I think would cause all kinds of anxiety for William, who is um, the owner of Percy the Tortoise. And uh, the job being done is by Martin. Hello. Martin, hello. Come and meet Percy. Where is Percy? There, there he is. He's out having a good munch of the grass. He and sure I'm picking is up having his, a good munch. Dare I say it, poos. He's what? Dare I say it, poos. You, you can, I'm afraid you can say it. That is part of uh, Percy's life. So Martin looks after Percy, and, um, and Martin, that involves tasks that you're fond of and perhaps tasks that you're a bit less fond of. Well, that not so fond of, but talking to him and doing his hair, I love doing. <laughs> Percy and me are old friends now. Yeah. So tell us about Percy and your, what, what you've discovered about him over the last months and years. Well, he's a nice chap to get on with. He's nice and quiet. He doesn't talk to me. But he certainly looks at me. He probably tries to talk. I'm sure he's got a lot to say back. I like, think he like, has. Thank he's, you, Martin, for he all does. the care and attention. That and you've... sometimes he goes for my boot. Sometimes he'll just look at my boot and thinks he could, I don't know, bite it. I'm not sure. But I don't put my hand down to him. No, because we did have somebody who put their hand down. Yes, and he will nip. And he went straight for them, didn't he? You see? Yes, and he I'm, did. I'm going to keep my hand away. And you can see he's actually opening his mouth a little bit there. Yeah. Percy, no, you're not going to bite my hand. But... Look at that, he's just wandered straight up. You know what, his shell is lovely and warm, and that means he's been sitting in the sun basking. He was and over there a, in the sun. He's a completely relaxed tortoise, isn't he? Because he's here with us now. He is. And he's just merrily going on his way and seeing a nice little bit of grass, and uh, off he goes. Martin, do you ever give him a, a clean? I do, I sometimes put a cloth, a damp cloth over him. Somebody says you can use chalk. I don't know how true that is, but I just do wipe him over. Well, the reason for chalk is probably because he needs to absorb calcium for his shell. Calcium, that's it. Yeah. Yes, Luke, yes. Um, well, um, Nestor and William know a lot more about... They do. Percy, I'm only Percy picking up I as I go. So I'm <laughs> well, learning but, a lot about him. But one of the things that I've learned about tortoises is that you want to look for shells. A healthy tortoise has a shell rather like this, where these shapes here are not too tall, which is called pyramiding. I've and heard of that one. That... Some, uh, somebody was talking about it one day when they saw him. So, so he's actually in really, really good shape. And he's, he's lively, isn't he? When he's, he really when, is. When the sun comes out and he, get, and he absorbs all of that energy from the solar rays, he it sort of sends him off into a frenzy. It does. When it's warm, he's... when it's cold, he goes back in. <laughs> I can't say as I blame him. It's lovely and warm in there. 
And he's got a lovely swimming pool over there. He's got he? a swimming pool which I've just cleaned this morning. Are you, are you giving it a clean? Fantastic. Yes, I swept it out, believe it or not, and, it's clean water. And fresh hay. Fresh hay, yes. Oh, there. Yep. Yeah. That was only done this morning. Yeah. Yep. So um, And his water's been changed, he's got a water dish in there. I've just done that. Yeah. No, he's he's an incredibly healthy and happy tortoise. He really is, and, yeah. Um, and he loves it here. Yeah. And and I think most of that is, is thanks to you. Well, I like being with Percy. We're old friends now. <laughs> you're, you're old friends with him. Raymond's also. Yes, Raymond is, because Raymond shuts him in at night. He do, Raymond does shut him in and feeds him a bit of um, yes, he does. lettuce and the odd strawberry, which is. Yes, a... I believe the cafe give him something sometimes. A bit do of they? lettuce. They did the other day, yes. Oh, right. So yeah, I gave it to him, yes. Multiple people feeding him. In there, we've got a heater which keeps it at about 30 degrees centigrade. It's which, about that now. Which, yeah. is, which is really what he's used to because he's supposed to be from sub Saharan Africa where the temperature is a little warmer than it is A little bit warmer here. than what we've Certainly got, yes today, it is. Certainly today, where we've got a slightly yeah. biting westerly wind. Martin, have you got any pets at home? Yes, I have a cat, you and that's cat. it. Yeah, do you talk that's... to your cat? Um, yes, I do talk to the cat sometimes, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> when she's naughty, yeah. <laughs> Good, you have a few words. Yes, she's a bit of a handful. No. Yeah, she's a very lively cat. Percy but... is getting quite but... interested in the, in the I... camera. He's, he's clearly ready for his close-up. Yes, he's coming in for a close-up. Uh, do you know what Go it on, is? Percy, I go think for it. actually he's, he's smelling Claire's leather boots. <laughs> I and, think he and does. He's, and he's thinking, actually, that would make rather delicious. If someone would take a bite meal. out, just a little nip of leather would be rather nice. Yeah. People think tortoises are slow, but... Um, no, this, when he gets is, going, he can go around her really fast if is, he wants to. This is to. one speedy yep. tortoise. Yeah. Yeah. The lively tortoise. Right. Thank you, Martin. We'll see you later. Great. He's really coming out of his shell, isn't he? Coming soon on Mapperton Live. I am here today, obviously getting my hair and makeup done. As many of you know, one of our sponsors uh, for Mapperton Live and for American Viscountess is Le Chameau. Um, they're gonna be using uh, the gardens and really a lot of the features around Mapperton, the house, mostly, well, all exterior. Uh, you'll also recognize soon Sophie, who many of you know from Glamping, Sophie, and also, you know, one of the most extraordinary farmers that we have here at Mapperton. She is a model.